Now, as former colonel of the Rhode Island uh, State Police, you know what it's like to lead a large law enforcement agency. You know Oscar Perez. I'm just curious what your reaction was when you heard he got the job as colonel. I'd say this is awesome. Um, <laughs> I talked to him about an hour ago. Um, he's happy, but I think for the department, they should be celebrating it. I think we mentioned earlier, he's filling big shoes. Yeah. But that doesn't mean he can't come in and do better than Huey Clements, and that would be his goal. So it's really up to him how he takes the department. He already has a very solid organization underneath him. Um, that's why they hired him. And I just think it's a, a great thing for him, great for his Hispanic community where he's from, uh, a great message to somebody that came from another country walked in the doors, became a police officer, and of note, a very good street cop, and that's a really compliment to him. Yeah, you know, as you point out, he came to Columbia when he was just 13 years old. He is the first Latino to run that police department in a city that is a majority people of color. He does bring a unique perspective to someone wearing the number one badge. Without question, I think he'll raise the bar for the Hispanic community, but just don't leave it at just the Hispanic community. I think the black community, the white community, the Asian community in the city will respect him. He has a very disarming personality. He's just the, he's the right fit at the right time. And again, he's coming in after you, Clements, and we all know how successful you was. Um, it, he just has to take it to a whole different level. My advice to him was to listen to his people, but also listen to the community, because the community talks, and there's a lot happening in the city of Providence, and as Providence goes, the state goes. Um, share experiences with the other chiefs, um, be part of that organization, but make sure that you're doing the best of your ability to represent yourself. And the last thing I said was make sure take some time time to go home if he can. He's tied to a phone. Tied yeah, is, to is that a, even possible, it, running the Providence Police Department, to, to running, be realistic? Yeah, any police department is really impossible not to be tied to a phone, right. uh, even if you have a small police department, because small things turn into big things in small communities. But for him, it's impossible. But I think every he's got 29 years experience. So he was head of internal affairs. He was head of um, the number two person, he's the commander. So his phone's going, he's used to that. But also he has to make sure he kiss, maintains a family life because that's really important because at the end of the day, that's really what's gonna matter. I'm curious what you think about this. We don't know yet if Mayor Brett Smiley is going to appoint a public safety commissioner. So someone that is above both the fire chief and, both, uh, and the police chief. Do you think it is di more difficult to run a large law enforcement agency with someone above you or does that relieve some of the pressure? It's a combination of both. So having a direct tie in the city of Providence or a state of Rhode Island, wherever it may be, to that leader, so this would be Mayor Smiley. Having the chief talk to him directly without a buffer is much better because then you get a better flavor for that chief and vice versa so you can educate each other. Um, uh, there's a school of thought having a public safety commission, but from my perspective, a police and fire are two different jobs. They have some similarities, but if you're a police chief and you become the public safety over fire, there's animosity. And if you're a fire professional overseeing police animosity, because you really don't know that business and it's hard to police somebody that doesn't know the same business. So for it'll be up to the mayor to decide what he wants to right. do. But if I was Oscar Perez, I'd want direct access to the mayor. And so there would be no buffer. A buffer could help, but I don't think it's uh, as effective as direct tie with that politically elected official. And briefly here, unlike the state police, the agency that you led for several years, urban departments have very unique challenges. What do you think is number one on the list for Colonel Perez? He has to listen to the community. I know he already does. Uh, I think if he's, well, I wouldn't say if he's smart, he's certainly smart, educated, and streetwise. Make sure he's talking to diverse groups all the time. Keep those community forums going. If you let them lapse for more than a period of time, um, what will happen is a void gets filled that's really difficult to fill. Make sure the community knows that the police care about them. And I think that they've been successful in the city of Providence over the last decade doing that under Colonel Clements. And I think he could be even more successful, successful by doing the same thing. Less than 30 seconds here. We don't know who the other candidates in total were. We know who the three finalists were. All of them were part of the command staff at Providence Police Department. Do you think it was important for the mayor to pick someone from inside the agency to run it? Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the adage in the law enforcement world, no problems in, stay in. Problems in, go out. So they stayed in. They send a message that province police officers can aspire to be the police chief. And he's probably the, the greatest example coming from another country into an environment, learned policing, and became the chief of police. So uh, her, her, really, congratulations to him. Mm. Congratulations to everything that goes with that. And again, he has big shoes to fill, but I'm certain he will fill them. 12 News Law Enforcement Analyst Stephen O'Donnell, thank you. Thank you.